All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Founding of Israel's Bible Studies program, and as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's holy Sabbath day. Now, the title of this lesson is The Straight Gate, or Enter into the Straight Gate. This has happened to be one of my you know, personal favorite lessons, but the difference in this one is that I am reading from the scriptures version of the Bible so that we can get, you know, a deeper understanding of what's being spoken to us. But before I get into that, let me go ahead and invite you to once again, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend and check the description box down below. And also, if you have any comments or anything, questions, comments, please put them in the comment section down below. I want to hear what you guys are thinking, okay? Share, talk to each other. Let's get the conversation going. Let's talk about this lesson. And with that, let me go ahead and jump in and go to Matthew 7 or Matthew 7. I'll be reading from the scriptures version, guys. Matthew 7. Let's see here. I think it'll be 7, 13, and 14, I think. Let's see. 13 and 14. And let's see here. If I start here, it says, Enter in through the narrow gate, because the gate is wide. And the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter in through it. So straight means narrow, obviously. 14. Because the gate is narrow and the way is hard pressed, which leads to life. And there are few who find it. You know, the beautiful thing about this is I like the whole idea of it's letting us know. OK, that there is a difference. OK, when people just say, oh, your truth is your truth and my truth is my truth and all roads lead to, you know, read, lead to God and all that, you know, all that, that that's all that's all cap. OK, no, it does not work that way. It does not. OK, it is not Burger King have it your way. You cannot. OK, there's a certain way that the most high describes how to walk on the path of righteousness, how to enter in at the straight gate. OK, certain things or certain requirements, certain things that he expects from us. There's a certain responsibilities that we have. And it's interesting because um, other mm, flavors of, you know, Christianity or whatever, they make it seem like you don't really have to. It, it doesn't really matter. And see, I, see, what we have to understand is that as much as we want to lament about the kingdom, um, how wonderful it is. It's kind of an exclusive club. Only the saints are getting in. Only those who are deemed worthy are getting in. Only those who are, uh, you know, who are forgiven or who are redeemed. Only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's not everybody. It's not any and everybody. It's only those who are his. Period. And the road to get there is narrow. The, the, the Mashiach is telling us himself, it's narrow. You don't get to do. In fact, when he comes, what he's going to do, he's going to purge out the rebel. That right there tells you, you can't just do anything you want. That, that's the part, that's the part that I, that, 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 that I like that it's just, it's like, hey, listen, this is what it's going to be. This is how it is. I'm sorry. I serve a Yah of uh, order. I serve a, 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 a Yah of protocol. And I'm not saying, oh, you got to work your way in. Or no, no, no. But you have to fall in line. You have to meet some, some sort of criteria. Otherwise, why are you calling anyone evil? Why anyone? It doesn't matter. They can do, they can do whatever they want. They get in just like you. They can be wicked. They get in. You can be righteous. They can, you can get in. So what's, what's the difference? Okay? Let's, let, let's be real here. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Let's go to Tehillim or... The Psalms. And when I get there, let me go to 118. 118. Because there are a lot of Psalms. It's going up to 118. 
118, and I'm going to read 18 through 20. And it says, Yah has punished me severely, but did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I enter through them. I thank Yah. This is, see, you, 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 do you see what I'm saying here? And also in, in this version, that's why you guys see me, you hear me say, Yah, you know, as the name of the most high. But you see, open to me the gates of right. This is what it is. It's about being righteous. And so some of you might say, well, what is righteousness? We'll get to that. But it's about being righteous. The straight gate, the narrow gate is a narrow walk. It's me and your walk. It's, it's, it's our walk, a narrow walk. We have to do certain things. We're still, we're still here. Don't, don't worry. We're still here. We're going to go to 119. And 119, I'm going to read 143 through 145. Okay. 119, that's like, like the longest chapter in the, uh, in the Psalms. So I'm going to read 143 to 145. Okay. Let's see here. Distress and anguish have found me. Your commands are my delight. The righteousness of your witnesses is forever. Make me understand that I might live. Cough. I have called with all my heart. Answer me, O Yah. I observe your laws. This is on this path of righteousness. You see, I understand that you may mess up, stumble, fall. Everyone in the Bible has. Every stumbled, fall, right? And I'm not talking about the Mashiach, okay? Because you're gonna get somebody say, "Oh yeah, but every oh, stop, stop it." I'm not talking about the Messiah. But every, every, everyone in the Bible has. They, they stumbled, they fall, they got back up. Still call, still used as examples of patience of Job, uh, a friend of God, man after God's own heart, stuff like that. Still. He still called imperfect people. It's not about being perfect, it's about being mature. It's not it's about it's about not making the same mistake over and over and over. And then when you mess up, I mean what what are we doing? Are you doing your sackcloth and ashes? Are you praying? Are you fasting as a sacrifice? Oh, most high Yah, I messed up. I'm not eating today. I'm not eating for 24 hours. I'm not eating for 36 hours. I'm not eating for two days. Well, I mean, are you sanctifying a fast or something? Oh, you don't take all. Hey, hey, hey. The prophets did it, right? The righteous ones, when they messed up, they be like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. I messed up. They acknowledge that, right? Are you acknowledging that? Yes, I understand. Oh, the blood of the Mashiach, it, it, it covers it. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yes, it does. But are you going to frustrate it? We talk about righteousness. It's cool. Let's go. Let's go. Let, 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 let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to go ahead and go to uh, uh, Ba McBah or Deuteronomy 6. I mean, I mean, Dabarim, sorry. Dabarim 6. Deuteronomy or Deuteronomy chapter 6. Okay. Now, I'm going to read 24 and 25. 24 and 25. In Yah, or Yahweh Yah commanded us to do all these laws, to fear Yah, Yahweh our Elohim for our good always, to keep us alive as it is today. And it is righteousness for us when we guard to do all his command before Yah our Elohim as he commanded us. What are these laws? It is righteousness. So what, so, so, so what is righteousness to the Hebrew? What is righteousness to the Messianic? His laws. What, 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 what's on that straight gate? What's in that natural gate? That righteousness? His laws. Why do you think not everyone's going to make it? And I'm not saying it to, I'm not saying to scare you or anything. This is just a logical, you know, this is an objective, logical conclusion when we read the whole of scriptures. 
you know everyone's not gonna make it. Somebody's gonna be in, somebody's gonna be made an example. Somebody's gonna end up in a hellfire. Somebody's gonna be in that lake. Someone's gonna be, and it, it won't be backstroking either. Okay, so I'm, I'm not telling you something you don't know. I mean, come on, let's be adults about this. We're gonna we're gonna keep it going, guys. We got let's go let's go back to the Psalms. We're gonna go back to the Psalms. Okay, and I uh, get there. I'm gonna go back to uh, 119 actually. What I want to do is I want you to understand that you're gonna a lot different different people are gonna come along. Okay, and I'm sure some of you may be looking right now. Some of you may be looking right now, and you have some butter muffin come up to you, and or or when you were converting, coming over to the truth of Torah, okay, and they tell you that you know you're in a cult, or it don't take all of that, or you don't have to do this, or any stuff like that. You 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 understand that, but you have to understand that this thing. See, under the former delusion. Okay, well, un 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 under that former delusion of the religion, right? It made it seem like just any and everybody and it's not that hard and it's just going to be. No, you are going to. It is hard. You're going to have to strive. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take your free will. What are you going to do? You're going to do what you want to do or are you going to give that over to the Most High and do what He wants you to do? So it is hard. It is hard getting over yourself. Why do you think the way is narrow? Then that mean all the religions of the world is going to lead to God. I just say, it does not matter what you do. But he said the road that leads to destruction is broad. It is wide. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff. And it's also a heck of a lot easier to go in that broad, broad way. To go on that broad road, it's easier because you can just do whatever you want. To thyself be true. Don't deny yourself anything. God understands. He's not worried about what you eat. He's not worried about what you do. He's not worried about how you celebrate. He's not worrying about how you worship. He ain't, he's not worrying about any. It. It's. Uh, I'll tell you right now. If I, shoot, if, if it really was that easy, you know, you have a God easy peasy like that, smooth sailing like that. Shoot, I'll take two. Well, I mean, come on. This if it's if it's really that simple. But people, but they, but don't think about stuff like that. They really don't. We're in one nineteen. Let's get on over to. One uh, 119 is going to be 172 to 76. 172 starts off, it says, My tongue sings of your word, for all your commands are righteousness. All your commands of righteousness. So understand that righteousness and commands or Torah is synonymous. Okay. Your hand is a help to me, for I have chosen your orders. Oh, really? Have you chosen his orders? I have longed for your deliverance, oh, Yah. And your Torah is my delight. Is it for you? Brothers and sisters, is it for you? My being lives and it praises you. And your right rulings help me. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Why do you think this Psalm of David, why do you think he's like a God, a man after God's own heart or whatever? It's the right attitude. Go ahead, read, read, read to Helene. Go ahead, go, go read, read the Psalms and stuff. I know not all of them were written by David, but most of them were. Read, look at, look at, look at his attitude in here. It's very enlightening. Look, look at his, look at his attitude in here. This is, uh, brothers and sisters, he, he just has the right attitude. He didn't speak disparagingly about his, about, about Yah's law. 
I mean, not even the New Testament really does. I mean, people twist the scriptures and make it seem like it is, but it's not. Brothers and sisters, this is about the straight gate. This is about the straight gate. Okay? Narrow path. I, I, hey, I want to see you on the path so we can help each other out. Okay? Let's get on the path so we can help each other out. So now, we're going to go on over to Mishle, or Proverbs, chapter 2. When I get there, I want to read 8 through 10. Proverbs, chapter 2, 8 through 10. To watch over the paths of right ruling and the way of his lovingly committed ones he guards. Then you would understand righteousness and right ruling and straightness every good path every good path straightness straight gate narrow gate narrow path is why we can't do any and everything we want i go like for example i go on vacation guess what tour didn't go on vacation i take tour with me what, 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 what do you mean, Maury? What do you mean, Brother Robert? Um, for example, I don't eat pork at home, right? I go abroad. I don't eat pork abroad. I'm respectful, but I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't eat, really eat that. You know, just for that's just one example. You see, you see what I'm saying? That's that that it's supposed to be written on the tablet. Of, you guys, you, you get what I'm saying? Narrow gate. Yeah, people may look at you a little strange. People might feel sometimes. Oh, well, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. You care about what people think or do you care about what the Messiah thinks? You profess me before men. I'll profess you before if you did not, all right, I, I, I guess I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything right now. Okay, let's go ahead and keep it going. 12, when Proverbs 12, Proverbs 12, I'm going to read verse uh, 28. It says, in the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death, because you get true life on that. You get true life. The originally, just obeying God gave you immortality. Right? I mean, before sin creeped in, there was no death. Right? I mean, are we talking here? So, this is still a true statement. Now, Messiah comes along and he creates a way for you to have immortality once again. So again, Although you and I may suffer the first death, we don't have to suffer the second one. And all we have to do is get on the path of righteousness. That's all, that's all we have to do. I can, count, I, I, I can tell you on one hand, the things you have to do to make it into the king. I'll tell you on one hand. Let's go to uh, Proverbs uh, 13 and 6. It says, Righteousness watches over him who is perfect in the way, but wrongness overthrows the sinner. Righteousness overtake you if you're in the way. Righteousness. I'm going to pump up right. I, I am. I am. I'm going to pump up righteousness because it is good. I'm going to pump up righteousness because when I, if I slip, guess what? I need righteousness. I need to get back up. I need to dust myself off. I need to get right back on that path. I don't need to. Oh, um, uh, I broke the Sabbath. That's it. I'm going to hell. I'm not trying no more. No, 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 no. I need to get up and I need to get it right. I need to pray. I need to repent. I may need to fast. And get rid of don't hey don't I don't want to frustrate the frustrate his grace hey you know what I need to get right back on this path and and Fessa I messed up 
No double talk, just straight accountability. I messed up. Now, of course, there's some sins. Uh, there's some willful sins, and then there's some by, um, you know, by a mistake. Sins done in ignorance. Like, you know, it could be a, an unclean ingredient in your food or something that you, that you were not aware about until like after the fact or something like that. Same thing. You find out, hey, you know what? Let's, let, let, let's pray for forgiveness. Get back on that path. I want to get back in that path. I want to be, I want to enter in that straight gate. Get back on the path. Yeah, sometimes you're going to get a flat tire. Sometimes you're going to hit a pothole. Sometimes, but you have got to keep going. You have got to keep going. Guess who wants you to stop? Guess, guess who wants you to give up on striving to enter in? I'll, I'll let you guys put that in the comment section down below. I'll let you guys put that in there. We're going to go ahead and keep going. We did 13 and 6. We're going to do Proverbs 15 and 9. Let's go to Proverbs 15 and 9. It says, The way of the wrong one is an abomination to Yah. But he loves him who pursues righteousness. You have to chase after this thing. You have to pursue it. You have to chase after this thing. Thing. You can't just give up. It's not just a one-time, one-and-done thing. I found it. There, here I am. Uh, we're good to go. No. No, brothers and sisters. You have to pursue it. You have to chase it down. You have to try. You have to strive to enter in. It's going to take some work. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some work. Let no one deceive you. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some sacrifice. You're going to have to give up something. You're going to have to have self-control. You're going to have to have some discipline. You're going to have to want it more than you want immediate, instant gratification. The immediate that gratification of your flesh, excuse me. You're going, to want to, you're going to have to chase after righteousness so hard like you really want the kingdom. Like it matters above all. It's not just a, a lackadaisical thing. Well, you know, I mean, you know, if I get, you know, eternal life, then, you know, I, you know if I get it, I get it. He said, you don't want to be, you know, he'd rather you hot or cold, right? You, I'd rather you hot or cold. You spew you out. So do you want, do you want it or not? We have to strive for this thing. If we want it, we better, we better act like we want it, amen? Let's go to um, Yeshiyahu or Isaiah 26. Yeshiyahu or Isaiah 26. And I'm gonna read eight through 10. Also, in the paths of your right rulings, O oh, Yah, we have waited for you. The longing of our being is for your name and for the remembrance of you. My being longs for you in the night also. My spirit within me seeks you earnestly. For when your right rulings are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world shall learn righteousness. The wrong finds favor. Yet ye shall not learn righteousness in the land of straightforwardness. He acts perversely and does not see the ex excellency of Yah. Okay. Let's do that one more time. Let's just run that back. Verse 8. Also, in the past of your right rulings, O Yah, we have awaited for you. The longing of our being is for your name your name and for the remembrance of you. My being longs for you in the night also. My spirit within me seeks you earnestly for when your right rulings are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world shall learn righteousness. The wrong finds favor, yet he shall not learn righteousness. In the land of straightforwardness, he acts perversely and does not see the excellency of Yah. You see, the thing is, 
when you understand righteousness and you're trying to walk in that, now the wicked comes along and they they they, they can't figure this out. You know, you know how the old saying, you know, can't get right. I remember the old Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence, you know, movie Life. You know, and they had that other prisoner can't get right. Okay, these the, the, these people. The, the, the wicked, they, 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 like he says right here, the wrong find, the wrong finds favor, yet he shall not learn righteousness. See, sometimes good things do happen to wicked people. We, we all know that. You know, some, sometimes good things, you know, it rain, it rains on a, you know, the wicked and the righteous alike or whatever. He said, but in a land of straightforwardness, when we're, you know, doing the right thing, he acts perversely. You, 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 you ever been. Back, I, I know we don't do the Sunday church now, but you remember you go to you know church back in the day in your in your in your former life. You go to church or whatever, and then somebody someone shows up who don't know how to act in church. You know, sometimes it's children, but they're adults too, right? That kind of thing. But Trey Forrest, he acts perversely and does not see the excellency of Yah. Just don't see it as a big deal. Don't see that we try to give our best to our Maker, our servant, our Master, our Lord, our King. Our Messiah. They don't see the excellency of Yah. They don't see the excellency of the Most High. They don't see it. They don't understand it. What's the big deal? You ain't got to do all that. I mean, all you have to do is just, you know. Come with me, brothers and sisters. Come with me. So we are in Isaiah and we're going to uh, do Isaiah one more time. In 26, we're gonna we're in, we're gonna go on up to 42. We're gonna go on up to 42. We do 42. We want to read five through nine, and then we'll jump a little bit. Five through nine. It says, "Thus says the El, Yah, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth that." which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. I, Yah, have called you in righteousness and I strengthen your hand and guard you and give you for a covenant to a people for a light to the nations. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in the darkness from the prison houses. I am Yah, that is my name and my esteem. I do not give to another, nor my praise to idols, nor my praise to idols. See, the former predictions have come and new ones I am declaring before they spring forth. I let you hear them. So now we're going to jump on down. OK, he's declaring who he is. We're going to do 20 to 25. 20 says this. You see much but do not guard. Ears are open, but do not hear. It was the, it has delighted Yah for the sake of his righteousness to make the Torah great and esteemed. Do you make the Torah great and esteemed? But this is a people robbed and plundered of all of them or snared in holes and they're hidden in prison houses and they have become a prey with no one to deliver for plunder and no one to say restore. Who among you gives ear to this, pays attention and hears for the time to come? Who have gave Yahakob for plunder and Yisrael to the robbers? Was it not Yah, he against whom we sinned? For they would not walk in his ways and they did not obey his Torah. So he has poured on him his burning displeasure and the strength of battle and is set him on fire all around. Yet he did not understand and it burned against him. Yet he did not take it to heart. See, when we broke this covenant, when we walked off the path, when we got off the straight gate. OK, Isaiah, he, he's saying or the most high saying through Isaiah. That I start giving these curses out, I, I start giving out the punishment. Fire all around. All these nations hate you. Those who share my hue. You get you get what I'm saying, particularly historically, particularly in history. Fire all around that like they don't like you, they don't hate you. I'm just saying collectively, all these other nations, what we're at the bottom of the totem pole, society. I'm not saying we're terrible people or anything like that. I'm saying we broke the covenant and we had to pay for it. 
and we don't even consider it. Most people, put it like this here, most people who are not awakened, they understand the upheaval in our society, you know, police brutality and discrimination. And we, we, we understand that, right? We understand, we understand the racism and all that. We, we get it. We, we understand it. And I'm talking about those who don't, who are not even awakened to who they are. That's why this right here, what he was saying, and it has set him on fire all around Yet he did not understand. They don't even know why they're going through it. They're not awakened. They don't understand that they broke the covenant or our ancestors and they continue to break it today. But our ancestors broke the covenant. We continue to break it today. And the Most High said he's going to punish the people and visit the iniquities on the children's children from generation to generation to generation. And we just keep carrying it forward. Because we're not breaking the cycle. See, the thing is, with you and I getting on a path, we have to break the cycle so it'll stop passing on from child to child to child to child. That's why it's so important for us to teach our children Torah so they can teach their children, that's our grandchildren, and then they can teach their children, that's our great-grandchildren, and eventually it can be broken individually. Now, as a whole nation, it's going to take a Messiah to come back. You guys understand what I'm saying? And it burned against him, yet he did not take it to heart. Like, he, he don't get it. See, those of us who are awakened and we see the suffering of, our, of the people who look like us, we, we understand what's going on. They don't get it. They, they don't understand. But you and I do. We know we're, they're off the path. We, we know they're on the broad gate. They're on that broad path. We understand that. They don't. They don't know that it's leading to destruction. Right? Oh, well, bad stuff happened on the right. Oh, no, 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 no. See, we live in a fallen world. So sure, bad things going to happen. But what's the ultimate outcome for the righteous? What's the ultimate outcome for those who are deemed worthy to have access to the kingdom? access or pardon by the Messiah and access to the tree of life in the end to enter into the golden city. See, that's the, that's the ultimate outcome. No more sickness, no more pain, no more tears, no more sorrow. All, all the, you, you, see the, you see the difference in the outcome? See, we can both go through some struggle. We can both have some, you know, bad things happen to us or whatever. We can both have some good things happen to us. But if you're on a broad gate or the narrow gate, one of them has a very positive outcome when this is all over. Amen? Let us continue, guys. Okay? Let us continue. We're in 42. Let's do Isaiah one more time. Isaiah is, uh, this Isaiah is on fire. He, he, he. He giving it to us, right? Isaiah is preaching. So, let's go ahead and let Isaiah cook. And he is, let's go to chapter 51, 1 through 8. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness. Seek Yah. Look to the rock you were hewn from and to the hole of the pit you were dug from. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was alone when I called him, and I blessed him, and I increased him. For Yah shall comfort Zion. He shall comfort all her waste places. For he makes her wilderness like Eden, and her des desert like the garden of Yah. Joy and gladness are found in it. Thanksgiving in the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give ear to me. O oh, my nation, for the Torah goes forth from me, and my right ruling I set as a light to peoples. My righteousness is near, my deliverance shall go forth, and my arms judge peoples. Coastlands wait upon me, and for my arm they wait expectantly. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look on the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish like smoke, and the earth wear out like a garment, and those who dwell in it die as gnats. But my deliverance is for ever, and my righteousness is not broken. Listen to me, you 
who know righteousness, a people in whose heart is my Torah. Do not fear the reproach of men, nor be afraid of their revilings. For a moth eats them like a garment, and a worm eats them like wool. But my righteousness is forever, and my deliverance to all generations. Listen to what the prophet is trying to tell us. And disregard those who come against his word. Don't listen. Don't don't regard those who come against his right rulings. Don't 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 worry about those 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 people. Because you just may not be on the same path. Enter in at the straight gate. Let us continue. I'm going to go over to, let's see here. Hmm. Now I want to go on over to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, and I want to go to chapter 14 of Ezekiel. So, 13 and 14. 13 says, Son of man, when the land sins against me to commit a trespass, and I shall stretch out my hand against it and cut it off its supply of bread and send scarcity of food on it, and cut off man and beast from it. Even though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Eob, were in it, they would deliver only themselves by their righteousness, declare the master, Yah. Are you guys getting it? You, 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 can, you, you can be saved. You, you, you can come out. Let's drop to 20. Even though Noah, Danielle, and Eyal were in it, and I lived, declares the master, Yah, they would deliver neither son nor daughter. They would deliver their own lives by their righteousness. See, it's not everybody. It's not going to be everybody. They're not going to be able to make it. Not everyone's going to make it because not everyone's willing to walk in righteousness. Not everyone's willing to sacrifice. Not everybody's willing to listen. Not everyone's willing. And that's what you have to understand. Not everyone's willing to die to their self daily. They're not willing to do that. And I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's easy, that it's, it's no big deal. Yeah, it's tough. But it's possible. It's possible to do better. It's possible to mature. It's, 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 it's possible. All things are possible, right? So, so, so it's possible that we can mature. It's possible that we can do better and that, that we can walk in righteousness. It's possible. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's go to Zephaniah. Let's see what Zephaniah has to say. Zephaniah chapter 2, and we're going to read 2 and 3. Before the law gives birth, they shall pass on like chaff. Before the burning wrath of Yah comes upon you, before the day of wrath of Yah comes upon you, Seek Yah, all you meek ones of the earth who have done none, who have done his right rulings. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. If so, be that you are hidden in the day of wrath of Yah. Seek righteousness. See, when the Messiah says, you know, when he comes, you know, who shall he find so doing? Like in the middle of walking in righteousness, 
what are you going to be doing? See, the scripture suggests that, that we should be watchful, right? That we should be watchful, that we should be ready. So what are you going to be doing? Are you going to be, at the time he comes, are you going to be practicing righteousness? Are you going to be walking in that straight gate? Or are you going to have a bacon sandwich in your mouth when he shows up? What are you going to be doing? Seek after this righteousness. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. If so, that you are hidden in the day of wrath of Yah. What he said over there in, 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 in verse 2? Before the day of wrath of Yah comes upon you, before you or I get caught lacking. Matthew Yahoo, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 5 and 6. Blessed are the meek because they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they shall be filled. It's all, it's all, it's, it's in the Psalms. It's what we've been going. You have to thirst after this. This is a big deal. You have to want it above all. How bad do you want this righteousness? How bad do you want eternal life? How bad do you want communion with the Most High and the Messiah? How bad do you want access to the tree of life? How bad do you want to be written in the book of life? How bad do you want immortality? You see? You understand? How bad do you want it? We're going to keep going. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 10. Book of Acts, chapter 10. When we get there, we're going to read 34 to 36. says this and over his mouth Kepha said truly I see that Elohim shows no partiality but in every nation he who fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him you guys you get this so anyone anyone can can uh, can achieve this okay 36 he sent the word to the children of Israel, bringing the good news, peace through Yeshua Messiah. He is master of all. So anyone who wants to get grafted in, anyone who wants a piece of this, anybody who wants to walk in the narrow gate can do it. If you're willing. If you're strong enough. Romans. We're going to go on over to Romans. Go to chapter 6 of Romans. Chapter 6 of Romans. I'm going to start over at verse 15. Chapter 6 of Romans, verse 15. see here we're gonna read 15 through 20 what then shall we sin because we are no that we are not under Torah but under favor let it not be do you know do you not know that to whom you present yourself servants for obedience you are servants of the one whom you obey whether whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness but thanks to Elohim that you were servants of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of teaching to which you were entrusted. 
and having been set free from sin, not from the law, from sin, you became servants of righteousness. I speak as a man because of the weakness of your flesh. For even as you did present your members as servants of uncleanness and of lawlessness, resulting in lawlessness, so now present your members of servants of righteousness, resulting in set apartness. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. When you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. We're going to go to uh, the Corinthians now. Okay. Going to go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, 34. 33 says this. Do not be led astray. Evil company corrupts good habits. Wake up to soberness righteously and do not sin for some do not have the knowledge of elohim i speak this to your shame yeah it's a shame some of them do not know elohim let's keep it going okay let's keep let, let, let's just keep going because i think you're getting it let's let's keep going i want this to sink in ephesians 4 Starting at verse 23, 23 to 29. Starting at verse 23. And to the renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the renewed man which was created according to Elohim, in righteousness and set apartness of the truth. Therefore, having put off the false, Speak truth, each one, with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be wroth, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your rage, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, so that he has somewhat to share with those in need. Let no corrupt word come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for the use of building up so as to impart what is pleasant to the hearers. To be able to tell you, tell them something good, righteous good. Tell them something good. Not just something that they just want to hear, but something that's actually good. Let's keep going. We have a lot of ground to cover. But let's keep going. So we're going to go on over here to... We're looking for Philippians. Let's go to Philippians real quick. There we go. And we're going to go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Okay, and we'll get there. We're going to start at 8, 8 through 14. He says, what is more? I even count all to be lost because of the excellence of the knowledge of Messiah, Yeshua, my master, for whom I have suffered the loss of all and count them as refuge in order to gain Messiah. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through belief in Messiah, the righteousness which is from Elohim on the basis of belief. And to know him and to and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. If somehow I might attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already received or already have perfected, but I press on to lay hold of that for which Messiah Yeshua has also laid hold of me. Brothers, I do not count myself to have laid hold of it yet, but only this, forgetting what is behind and reaching out for what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the high calling of Elohim in Messiah Yeshua. We cannot act. This is this is Shaul, right? This is Paul, right? 
and he's acting as though, <coughs> excuse me, he's acting as though he has not attained it. He's, he, he was not living as if he's, he's already got it lock, stock, and barrel. He just kept moving. He kept pressing towards the mark, striving to enter in. Enter in at the straight gate. Let's keep it moving, guys. We're going to go ahead and keep, we're just, we're just going to keep it moving. Let's go to the Timothys over here. <coughs> Excuse me. First Timothy, we're in six. First Timothy six, we're going to go uh, 11 through 16. 11. But you, O man of Elohim, free from all this and pursue righteousness, reverence, belief, love, endurance, meekness. Fight the good fight of belief. Lay hold on eternal or everlasting life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession before many witnesses. In the sight of Elohim who gives life to all and of Messiah Yeshua who witnessed the good, conf the good confession before Pontius Pilate, I charge you that you guard the command spotless, blamelessly until the appearing of our master Yeshua Messiah, which in his own seasons he shall reveal the blessed and holy ruler, the sovereign of sovereigns and master of masters, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or is able to see, to whom be respect and everlasting might. Amen. We're going to keep it going. See, this is what you're striving for. This is how you get it. Entering on the straight gate. Guess what? All those who are his, they're on the path. They're on the path of righteousness. If somebody is wicked and they stay wicked over there, they stay over there. Destruction comes to them. Oh, you're saying the, the, the wicked can't be saved? And, oh, no, no, no. If they come on the path, they can be saved. They stay over there. They can't be saved. It's that simple. You keep doing whatever you want to do. You don't want to have no respect for the Most High God. You get destruction. You get what's coming to them. I'm not deciding what's the path of righteousness and the path of destruction. The Bible tells us what that is. The Bible says that the path of righteousness is narrow. Not me. The Bible says that the path of destruction is broad. Not me. What are we doing? We're going to go 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Just, just, just 16 and then we'll move on. All scripture is breathed out by Elohim and profitable for, for teaching, for reproof, for setting straight, for instruction and in righteousness. This is how we get righteousness. This is how you get it. Get this word in you. Write this on your heart. Get it deep down, brothers and sisters. Let me encourage you to get it deep down. We're going to continue. We're in 2 Timothy, right? We're going to go chapter 4, verse 8. For the rest, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the master, the righteous judge, shall give to me on that day. And not to me only but also to all those loving his appearing for when he shows up, loving and expecting his appearing. When he shows up or when he wakes me up, loveliness, I want that crown of righteousness. I want that crown of life. I want that crown of righteousness. I want any crowns, whatever they got, I want that too. Any good gifts he has, I, I want that too. Any good gifts he has. Yes, please. Thank you. I'll take some more. I, 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 I do actually desire it. Second Timothy, we did four and eight. Now we can go to Second Peter. Second Peter. Okay, so here, let's see, 2 Peter, 
and we have chapter 2 20 through 22 chapter 2 20 through 22 chapter 20 says this verse 20 says this for if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of the master and savior yeshua mashiach they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the first for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the set apart command delivered unto them for them the proverb has proved true a dog returned to his own vomit and an unwashed sow returns to the rolling in the mud so for you to know the truth for you to understand and guess what brothers and sisters it's sad to say that some people actually actually has done this they actually came out of whatever form of religion that they had they come over to the truth and they went right back because they didn't remain on the road they did not remain on the straight gate it was too hard they walk away they understand what the covenant is and they walk away they're gone. So this applies, this, this right here applies to those people who come and they walk away. Because we're supposed to what? Put it in the comment section below. We're supposed to endure until the what? Okay. Going to the Johns. Let's go to first John. We're just working, we're just working our way. We're just working our way through. First John. We're gonna go chapter 2, 28. Chapter 2, 28. We're going to read 28, 29. And now, little children, say in him, so that when he appears, we might have boldness and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone doing righteousness has been born of him. Anyone practicing righteousness, that's my brother and my sister. Peace be unto you. Any, 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 anyone practicing righteousness, that's my brother and my sisters. That's even what the that's even what the Messiah said. I know, okay, cool. Because I because I know sometimes we may have some small little doctrinal differences, right? Long, you know, as long as it doesn't threaten our salvation and stuff like that, we can come and, and, and let us reason together. We can talk about it. If it's some of that other, you know, little little small things. My brother and my sister. Because they might be wrong. I might be wrong. But we brothers and sisters, we're, if, we're, if we're on the same path, hey, brothers and sisters, peace, shalom. Uh, let's keep walking that walk. Let's keep edifying and building each other up. We can talk about it inside the kingdom. Let's, we, get, let, we will have a, a party on ins, inside the kingdom. When we wake up, hey, good to see you. Good to see you. All right, we 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 are in here now. See that that, that that's all I want. That, that that's all I want. Okay, I want to see all of us on that pad. We're still here, and um, we're still here. First John. I'm gonna go. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna go chapter three, and I want to read. Uh, I'm going to start at 6. I'm going to finish up here. 6. Everyone staying in him does not sin. Everyone sinning has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one lead you astray. The one doing righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. The one doing sin is of the devil, because the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Elohim was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Now, I'm going to uh, read all the way to uh, 11. Everyone, having been born of Elohim, does not sin. His seed stays in him, and he is powerless to sin, because he has been born of Elohim. In this, the children of Elohim and the children of the devil are manifest. Everyone not doing righteousness is not of Elohim, neither the one not loving his brother. Because this is a message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. I want to see you, you, and you on the path 
of righteousness leading to the kingdom so that we all can celebrate when we get in. We can all celebrate our most high father. We can all celebrate our Messiah. We can celebrate our immortality because it would mark the end of suffering. It will mark the end of corruption, pain, violence. All that comes to an end when eternity, immortality, and eternity comes. I hope someone has been edified by this lesson. This has been the narrow gate, straight gate. So until next time, let me invite you one more time to like, share, subscribe, smash that notification bell, tell a friend to tell a friend. Shalom Israel.